School comes to an end, and despite how long it seemed to drag on, the sun is still high in the sky. Along the path back home, there are only one or two groups of friends, as the rest rushed out the moment school let out. Usually there would at least be a few kids sticking around for sports, but I guess they don't start after school practice till next week or something. To my right, Sayori is happily skipping along while humming a little tune. She seems a bit too happy about this whole club thing, but whatever gets her off, I guess. Just as I realize I need better expressions, she turns to me. Are you excited? Not really. I made it clear I didn't want to help. Oh, come on. You don't have to keep that, or that act up. Huh? I know Monica's really pretty, but she's super kind, too. What are you talking about? Sierra giggles, flashing a smug smile. It's all right. I won't tell her. Wait, wait. I wasn't... Before I get a chance to defend myself, Sierra's attention is drawn to a man selling ice cream on the street corner. Hey, can we? No. I didn't even get to... Ask me to buy you ice cream? The answer is still no. Come on, please. I promise I'll pay you back this time. That's what you said the last 200 times. But I super duper mean it this time. You said that the last 14 times. And I mean that with extra duper. Extra duper, huh? Her reassured promise, plus the addition of her puppy-like pleading breaks down my resistance, and I concede. All right, all right. What do you... Strawberry! At least show some hesitation. The two of us walk over to the man and buy two cones from him. As he's scooping the treat, I have to hold Sari back from pouncing on the hidden reserve. He sends us off with a smile and turns down the road, continuing his ice cream journey. Sari and I, not part of the vendor's ice cream adventure, take a seat on a nearby bench. How come you always get vanilla? That's like the most boring flavor! Whoa, whoa, back off. Vanilla and I got history. He's my homie. Plus, I relate to being the plain option. Besides, you always get strawberry. Who even likes strawberry-flavored anything? I do! Strawberries alone are amazing, but in ice cream form, they're amazinger! Sayori, perhaps to showcase her love of strawberry desserts, takes a big bite out of her scoop and swallows it almost instantly. <laughs> Suffering the obvious consequence, brain freeze. I snicker at her childish reaction, taking a few licks of my cone. It's not especially hot today. Any reason you begged me so much for ice cream? Mm, no, not really. I just thought it'd be nice to have some. It reminded me of when we were back in the middle school. Ah, you're right. My wallet suffers from a severe form of PTSD from all the abuse you inflicted on it back then. You could have always just said no, meanie. Back then, I hadn't grown as exhausted by Sayori's antics as I have now. So I would happily go along and buy whatever food she ogled that day. Oh, boy, am I gone. Also, ogled only needs one G. And, um, I think she already proved to you what happens when you try to say no. Maybe I was just a white knight. I tossed that horrifying possibility out of my head with a violent shake. Yeah, I guess I never did turn you down. I only started doing that around last year or so. Especially me that year. I didn't even really speak to you until the end of it. Yeah. Oh, uh, sorry. I watch as Sari visibly recoils from casually mentioning those events. The two of us stuff our faces with ice cream to avoid further conversation. In one last frenzy of bites, she finishes her treat before nearly swallowing her cone whole. First! This was a race? Yup, and loser is the pay for the ice cream. <laughs> That's a funny joke, Sari. Finishing off my cone, I stand up next to her and the two of us continue to walk home. As we approach my house, she turns to me. Alright, make sure to get plenty of rest today. We've got a long day ahead of us. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'll make sure to get at least five hours of sleep tonight. Oh, I can tell you're serious. That's five more hours than usual. With a thumbs up and a smile, the two of us part from each other, and I open the door to my hat. Why isn't the door opening? Oh, right. The trash. Correction, with a thumbs up and a smile, the two of us part and I jump through the window to my living room. I spend the rest of the night cramming in a bunch of things I want to do in anticipation for all the free time I'll be losing. Tuesday comes and with it my forced obligations to Monica. School has long since ended, but I've found myself quietly sitting while on my phone. I wonder where Sayori is. I throw this into the wind, perhaps with too much enthusiasm, but there's a good reason for it. Behind me, right now, is Sayori, who believes she's about to get another successful sneak attack on me. <laughs> she doesn't realize that I know she's here, and I plan to use that in my first counterattack of the year. 
Seriously, she's so late. The sounds of her tiptoeing come closer and closer as she slowly reaches the back of my chair. I manage to make out the tips of her fingers in my peripheral vision. She's about to pounce. I steel myself to dodge. The world around me seems to slow down, with the clocks ticking, feeling like a countdown to the inevitable. She said a word there, and I clicked another one away. Gut? I don't think so. As her hands just barely scrape my uniform, I hoist myself out of my seat quickly and shove my chair into Sayori's body. Poof! The sudden attack knocks her off balance and sends all the air in her lungs spewing out in a strained exhale. Time for the ultimate technique. I quickly turn around to her face her and place my thumb over my pointer finger while I power up for... Gotcha. A flick. My thumb goes flying and smacks the area with a force that surprises even me, enough to make her head recoil backwards slightly and correct her disbalance. Eck! Heh, <laughs> nice try. But the organization needs to perfect its techniques. Or, oh, it's techniques. If they want to pull a fast one over me. Sarah rubs the impact spot of her head as she pouts at me through watery eyes. They worked last time! You must have used some forbidden magic to see past my stealth! Aha! That's where you're mistaken, for I knew you were here because you made a fatal mistake in your execution. What? No way! Well, my stealth has allowed me to sneak past the defenses of world leaders! Open your heart, for you know it to be true, despite all your training, all your debriefing, and all those hours of planning. It was the rumble of your stomach that gave you away! What? It can't be! She drops to her knees, dramatically, staring at the ground with an intense glare. In the end, it wasn't the organization's teachings that failed me! Bitter tears of defeat fall down Siri's cheeks as I stand above her, the victor. <laughs> the two of us slowly burst into laughter as our bit concludes. I reach down and grab Sayori's hand, pulling her back up to her feet. Probably our best one yet. Well, I don't know. I think you've had better performances. As hard to please as ever. <laughs> I seriously thought I heard you, though. I didn't think my stomach was loud enough for you to hear it. It was pure luck. I had started to wonder where you were when it growled. Glenn, the new one doesn't count! Count it or don't, that still leaves me in the lead. Nope! New year, new scoreboard! We're 1-0! You can't just change up the scoring system on a whim. As the two of us discuss the legitimacy of my victory, the door to the classroom slides open. Oh, there you two are! You two were taking so long, I started worrying when something happened! Uh, sorry Monica, the two of us got kind of caught up in a game! It's alright. From the looks of it, you two are having fun. I sort of feel bad for interrupting it. Monica looks over to me with that same smile from yesterday, and once again, I begin to stand up straight. Ugh, I hate this girl. It's fine. So what are we going to work on today? Well, since the staff's going to be here late working on preparations for the new year, it'd be a good chance to finish a bunch of paperwork. So I thought we could go through and finish some of the papers they handed me yesterday together. That sounds so boring! I'm sure it is, but we have to do it or the school's records won't acknowledge us as a legitimate club. She walks over to us too and finds herself a desk nearest to mine, turning it around to face me. Sarah does the same, forming an oddly shaped table. Monica reaches down into her bag and produces a small pile of papers that she throws onto the desk with a small thud. Christ, that's a lot. Tell me about it. Most of it's not even the application, just the guidelines. Let's start with the application packet. It's the one with the most pages. Well, well, hold on a second. One minute here. Most of it's not even the application, but the application is the one with the most pages. <laughs> she grabs the application packet and pushes the other pages aside. First off is the club's basic information name, description, officers, etc. Speaking of which, what kind of club are you even making? Oh right, you didn't tell him. Sorry, I told Sayori all my ideas, but you've been in the dark all this time. You see, I want to make a club based around literature. Literature? That's right. Things like reading poetry, novels, or even writing. I've always had a fascination with the way authors draw in an audience. So when I decided to quit my previous club, I thought it would be the perfect time to share my love with others. Uh, I see. She seems very invested in this idea, but the idea of a literature club sounds... completely boring. I can't imagine how hard it'll be to convince people to join a club based around something like that. Ah, uh, a literature club sounds too pretentious and stuffy, huh? She must have been able to make out what I was thinking by looking at my reaction. I sort of feel bad for responding so negatively. Well, I can't really argue with that. I've always
always held back from pursuing an idea like this because I was worried no one else would want to join. The name alone would throw most people off and anyone who did join might feel too intimidated to truly share what they enjoy. But this time is different. I'm confident that with the two of you, I can turn this pipe dream of mine into something real. A place where people don't feel like they need to hide what they enjoy and can come to share their enthusiasm with other like-minded people. Oh, wow. I'm left speechless in the aftermath of Monica's passion. It's the kind of thing that makes it hard to continue talking. I can't help but root for her. I'm sorry if I came off strongly. It's just hard for me to hold back more than I already have. I've definitely gone ahead of myself. We haven't even got a club description down. Why don't you try using what you just said? It made me feel really excited about literature, so I'm sure it'll attract others too. You think? We'll have to cut it down though. Hmm. The two girls start going over how to word the club's description. I start to feel a little left out. Those two are obviously on a wavelength that I can't possibly tune into. Guess I'll just scroll through my phone. If those two can do most of the paperwork on their own, then that's fine by me. Now we need to decide officers for the club. Obviously I'll be the president, but for vice president... You don't need to pretend you're trying to spare my feelings, just pick Sayori. Uh, not too big on leadership, sorry. I decided to give her the push. Oh, I can do it! Are you sure? It's a lot of responsibility. Don't worry, I'm ready to take on whatever I need to make your dream come true! Where'd this hidden love of literature come from? Alright then, from this day forth, you are the Vice President of the Literature Club! Woo, I can feel the power already! Don't let it go to your head. Sari dances in her chair while Monica writes down her information in the officers section. The two of them continue to fill out the, inf or the form at a remarkable speed. It's fascinating how great a duo the two make. You'd think that they'd have trouble keeping on the same page, but the way the two of them can communicate so flawlessly is impressive. It isn't long before they've managed to make their way through the entire packet. We're already done? Yeah, it seems so. I honestly didn't think it'd go so smoothly. I thought we'd be here for an hour at least. She stands up and begins to stretch. All right, well, I should go and hand this off to them. Oh, I can do it for you. Huh? Huh, it's fine. The walk isn't too far. I know that, but you did most of the work anyways. Let me do this for you. What do you mean, Sayori? You helped me plenty today. Mm, still, you should get some rest. Leave it to your vice president. I feel as if Sayori's only making a fuss because she wanted to use that line. Regardless, it's a nice gesture, one that Monica accepts. I'll be right back. Passing the packet to her, Sayori takes off and leaves me alone with Monica. It seems we didn't end up needing you after all. I feel bad that I made you stay with us. Eh, it's whatever. Despite my initial objection, it was a strange sort of fun watching the two of them bounce off each other. I didn't have anything I needed to do anyways. I see. You know, you and Sayori seem so different. I'm amazed that the two of you are such good friends. Eh, just how it worked out. Monica tries to rope me into a conversation, probably to prevent an awkward silence. Like that. You seem kind of quiet, but Sayori's so happy and full of energy. And yet you two seem to get along perfectly, like with that little comedy routine you had. Ah, uh, you saw that? No, but I heard a small bit of it when I was looking for you guys. I didn't mean to eavesdrop. Do you two plan those out or something? No, we just sort of play off each other. It's how we are naturally. Huh. She's quite lucky to have a friend like that. If anything, I would consider myself the lucky one. Siri might be the one person in this school who isn't completely driven by a perverse desire. She's kind of, er, she's kind because she's kind. I feel a little bad that she's friends with someone like me, honestly. You worry about her a lot, huh? Uh, I started to talk out loud again. I guess so. Monica giggles slightly at my embarrassment. Turning towards the window, she begins to gaze upon the rows of desks behind us. The look in her eyes is com or complicated. I can't quite make out what expression is behind them. But it's the same kind of restrained feeling I got from her before. At this time, I had the oddest feeling I was intruding on something, like the scene in front of me wasn't meant for me to see. I begin to tense up instinctively. Monica turns back from the desk and seems to instantly notice my discomfort. Well, there really isn't a reason for me to stick around, is there? She stands up and grabs a hold of her bag. I think that's enough progress for today. We can spend the rest of the week working out a few more specifics. I'll see you tomorrow. Monica walks out of the classroom hastily, seeming a little embarrassed. Soon after, Sari returns and the two of us begin to head home. 
I wonder why she left in such a hurry. Beats me. Maybe she remembered she had something to do. Hmm. I'll ask her tomorrow when we meet up. Speaking of which, I think I'm going to skip on that next meeting. What? But you said you'd help her out. I know that, but you two don't, er, two don't really seem to need me around. Think about it. You two got through that entire packet all on your own. All I did was look at my phone. There's always tomorrow, though. What if... Siri stops mid-sentence, almost as if she's realized something. A familiar smug grin starts to creep on her face. All right, I completely forgot. Whatever you forgot is definitely off the mark. You were pretty quiet around her today. Is your crush on her so big that it leaves you speechless? Eh? She comes to the same conclusion as yesterday, yet it still manages to catch me by surprise. If you're too embarrassed to be around her, that's fine. <laughs> I should have known better than to leave you two alone. You probably were there thinking. Sayori, I don't have a crush on her. Still trying to deny it, huh? It's okay. We're best friends. You don't have to hide it from me. I'm not hiding anything. Her being hot had nothing to do with my reluctance. Not anticipating such a deadpan response, Sayori's rhythm seems to have been thrown off. Oh! I quickly try to explain myself, seeing how flustered she is. It's not like I hate her or anything, but... Come on, you've had to have heard the stories about her. Stories? Those are just rumors. You shouldn't believe it just because... I don't. Give me more credit than that, Sayori. But I've even heard the teachers discussing it. If they're talking about it, then clearly there must be some truth to them, right? While the rumors are playing a part, most of my indifference comes from our first interaction. Something about her eyes feels off. Like she's holding something back. It's been putting me on edge. Then there's today. There's no doubt in my mind Monica's caught up in something. While my excuse isn't the full truth, it's the best way I can explain my opposition without sounding ridiculous. Siori's mood seems to take a dip as she stops skipping. Well, maybe... Look, we don't know much, but that means we can't completely dismiss those rumors either. I guess you're right. She mumbles this at a near inaudible level. The conversation, having turned awkward, dries up and we spend the rest of the walk in silence. We reach my house after another ten minutes of silence. The two of us stop in place and give our goodbyes. I'll see you tomorrow, all right? Mm-hmm. Sierra only gives a slight nod in response, and I slowly turn away from her and begin to walk inside. Before I get too far, she speaks up. You know, you don't actually have to help her if you don't want to. What made you change your mind? I wouldn't want to make you do something you don't want to. I can just tell her you're too busy. Look, I said all that stuff, but it's not that big a... I have to get going. See you tomorrow, all right? With a false smile, she quickly dashes away. Away, away. Leaving me mid-sentence, I sighed at myself before jumping inside. Once I've made it through, I toss my bag over towards the couch, heading immediately towards the kitchen. Lunch was hardly enough for me, so I decided to make a sandwich to tie me over. It would be tied me over. T-I-D-E. Means a lot to her, huh? That's what Sayori said when she originally asked me to help. Sayori's attachment to Monica strikes me as excessive. As far as I know, they hardly know each other. With how she's acting, you'd think she'd know Monica forever. Ah, who am I kidding? That's just the kind of person she is. Even if they just met, she's too nice not to help. I chalk it up to her usual kindness and move on. If I won't be helping Monica tomorrow, then I guess that means I can... The truth of Sayori's words from earlier sink in. What will I do? There are, of course, video games I could be playing, but those hardly count as pressing business. I have nothing to do. Sayori would probably just sleep the time away, but something about napping always leaves a bad taste in my mouth. A similar dread to the one I felt during the break begins to creep up on me. Not only that, but the guilt of turning down Sayori starts getting to me. Ah, uh, what was I even being so anal about then? Does Monica really bother me that much? Enough that I'd turn down helping Sayori? As I try and answer these questions, I look down to realize something. Wait, I don't have any bread. Ah, well, this seems like a good enough stopping point, so we're gonna put it here. Because I only needed a couple episodes to fill up the rest of this week. In case you didn't notice, we went through a lot of mods this time. My goodness, this is like... The fifth one, I want to say, I recorded in a row? Maybe the fourth? Hold on a second. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be super unprofessional here. I'm gonna go to my videos folder. Uh, let's see, I recorded the rest of Shattered Time, and then all of Viva Viva, 
and the Doge mod, and uh, the musical. Yeah, it's one, two, three, four. This is actually the fifth mod of content this we get this week. But whatever. Point is, that's it for Forward Moon for now. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and we'll catch you next time with more of this. Hope to see you then. Bye bye.